All right, let's go to the next story here. Dana White. Rob, if you got the Dana White and the Theo Vaughn clip, if you can play the first one. Dana White talks about what a sponsor asked him to do, and he breaks down what he ended up telling him, and he was very diplomatic about it. Go ahead and play it. Me too. This, this happened to me. I posted a video for Trump, right, mm -hmm. on my personal social media, and one of our big sponsors called and said, take that down. You know what I said? Go oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> You vote for whoever you want to vote for, and I'll vote for whoever I want to vote for. That's how this works. I don't even care who you're voting for. It's none of my fucking business. But fuck you. Yeah. Don't ever fucking call me and tell me who to I vote for. It. Yeah. Very yeah. diplomatic. Yeah, I think I a lot of people feel in fear these days, you know? A lot of people feel in fear that if they don't vote for certain people, they're going to lose their jobs. Yeah. I mean, it's Hollywood, for example. Think about how fucking crazy that is. It sounds insane. It sounds yeah. just like... Well, it'll keep happening unless more people stand up for themselves. Yeah. There you go. And... Give him the fuck you response. Okay, so now play the Theo Wong clip, which, which first of all, I love this. And he told us a story in his office when we were with him for a couple hours. It's a very, this is why I respect the guy. This is why I respect the guy. You know, go, play this clip. This is now Theo Wong talking about what happened with Peloton. A company call, or a couple companies call advertisers like, you guys need to take the episode down, you know? What sponsor did it? Oh, Peloton was the. Peloton. Yeah. What do they sell? Fucking bikes? The stationary bikes? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Peloton sells stationary bikes, and they got a problem with Robert fucking Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Peloton. <laughs> what? Who the fuck are they? Yeah, first right? Of all, are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Fucking Peloton calling <laughs> Pelotons in the gym? Are those Peloton? Yeah. Asports. No, no, there's bikes next to it. Asports. Ask. Yeah. We're getting rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting rid of the Peloton. A company call or couple. Oh, so, so, Pat, just to give people a little context. Boom. Was, uh, uh, he he posted. Theo posted the video of RFK. Peloton called and said, "Take it off of YouTube." And then that's the conversation that happened. So it's but Pat, Pat it's weird though. But if you have money and you're powerful. You could say shit like this, but the average person that's just out there trying no. to make it, you can't, you but, can't. But let me tell you, though, but let me tell you, though, he's empowering everybody. No, you can't say that. So the, the average person, you're right. When you're saying the average yeah. guy that's taking $200, $300, $500, $400, $400, but here's what happens. This is why I said if Snoop quits smoking weed, he's the big dog. When you think about smoking weed living, who's the, who's the Snoop, god of smoking weed no, living? Obviously. So if he quits, he can influence hundreds yes. of thousands of people to consider smoking I, weed. I agree. Okay. If, if Dana calls out brands like that, guess what brands are now doing? They're sitting. This hurt Peloton right now listening to this shit. And he, by the way, the fact that he doesn't reveal the name of the other company he's talking about, I guarantee you there's an element of it where he is – hanging on to it for future purposes that in case if he does, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple months he actually tells people who it is, the other brand. But the point here is this. This is empowering content creators to not allow sponsors to bully you, period. So, by the way, okay, let's just say you are having a sponsorship and you do support whatever you support, and sponsor calls you and takes you, tells you to take it down or else yeah. you should talk about it. Oh, 100%. And meaning I would take it down, but what do you say about the people that, Pat, need this money, need this income, and then all of a sudden they're like, you... What sound is that noise? There's what sound is that? Somebody, somebody dr drilling? Is somebody That's drilling? Outside. I'll take care who? of it. It's yeah, outside. Okay. Yeah, that's no, what I, I was just, like, I just yeah. actually found out they're removing the Peloton from the gym that we have here. <laughs> Let's but, get that shit out of here, Rob. So, so Pat, my, my point, no, yeah. I'm with you 100%, but what I'm saying is, Pat, the average Joe that has one sponsor that's giving him $1,000 a month that he needs to pay for food in his car and stuff, mm -hmm. they go, hey, take it down. That guy's taking it down. I mean, I would hope for him to be able to, like, like, to, say, to have the power to say F you and find somebody else, but if that's all you have, then you're kind of screwed, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. I, have, I have another perspective. What did he say? My personal account, yeah. I put a, a simple post about voting for Trump a candidate. So what, what Dana is talking about there, he's a business owner who has a, enough of a visibility. And there's a lot of business owners that have basic visibility. You could have a small business in your town and have a Twitter with 2,000 followers, but people in your circle in your small town see you. And what he's saying is, I personally 
are voting this way. I don't care who you're voting for. That's not really not my business. And he's talking about, I believe, freedom and a core point of free speech more than he's talking about sponsorship defense. And I applaud Dana for saying it to empower even the smallest businessman who says, hey, I support this candidate. I like what he stands for here. And not to have other people come silence you and attempt to leverage any part of your economic being like your sponsorships or doing business with you. I applaud this for empowering all of us. By, by the way, here's a question for you. You think Dana's been like this since he was small, or you think Dana only started being like this when he was big? F from everything that I've seen from Dana, Dana's never changed. That's the mm -hmm. point. So I the love point that. is, True this is a philosophy. But by, by, by the way, I'm telling you, I can tell you stories of me making a decision like this that almost cost me a few hundred million dollars, okay? I'm telling you. I believe The it. story about me sitting in a room with Moral Tom and uh, Moral uh, Amor and a AIG sitting there, and the concern was about me oh, being Armenian because of insurance fraud. And I said, yeah. if this is what you're going to do, we're going to have a problem. If they still dropped us, I don't have the kind of money they have to pay $1,200 lawyers. At that phase of my life, phase of my life, I could only afford three or $400 an hour lawyers. They can afford $1,200, $1,500 an hour lawyers. If we lose that in that moment, but I will tell you, that moment was the moment the insurance industry found out these guys are not playing around, period. Tom and I are on the call one time, okay? Tom, if, if you're comfortable telling the story, we'll tell the story. You know which one I'm talking about? I want to hear it, Tom. Up in the mountains? The one we're smoking weed? No, 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 no. <laughs> Tom, were you on that cheech? In, no, Tom, Tom, were you on that cheech? Tom, and different, different, the one in the jacuzzi? Because <laughs> well, no, there's a couple of big conversations I know, the we've story had. One in the no, jacuzzi? No, not, that, one, that one is our business. It's no one's business. The one I'm talking about is, I don't know which one, we're sitting in the, in the truck, we're having a call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm talking about... Uh, the call when this company comes to us and they want they want us to pay twenty five thousand dollars. Do you remember that call? I am perfectly comfortable with this. Okay. Uh, do you mind one... sharing that story? By the way, Tom had just started. We we we, are, we haven't worked with each other for years yet. Okay. This is maybe nine months we're working together. You too. Me and Tom. Got you. Actually, it's probably even less than nine months. Something okay. like that. But go ahead, Tom. So we had a. Um, I'll just put it this way. Um, in um, insurance, you have a lot of software out there that, that helps you do this or that. Let's just call it helper software that does some function. And it saves you money, saves you a head count, and it works real well. We had gone to an insurance count conference, long story short, found some software that was really, really applicable for what we could do, could save us some money, help us process things faster. All businesses want to go a little faster, process more at a lower cost, all that. Help us do that. So the guy's really nice guy, actually, the, the CEO, stand-up guy. But at the end of it, he said, hey, <clears throat> here's the price for it. And, you know, you have a couple other insurance carriers you work with that if you'll call them and tell them how much you like the software and they're using it on the other side of your business, it'll help me cut a deal with them. And then I'll, I'll be working with all the carriers. You understand what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. He's saying, hey, why don't you call on behalf of you and then tell them to use, use my software, software? Got it. And you, you have influence. So call them and get them to use my software. I'm like, OK, go ahead. Okay. Tom. And then then he says, but I'd still like you to pay, you know, to, to, to pay a license fee to use the software. And. On the surface, I was thinking for a second, okay, seems reasonable. But then Pat said, wait a minute, Tom, if we're doing the marketing and we're going to be the mm -hmm. salesman, we should get a like of almost course. like a commission. Of course. So why don't we get the software for zero as our commission for helping him? Of course. That's that's a no-brainer. And that was a, that's basically how the gist of it. How long did that it. call last with them? Uh, four minutes, 13 seconds. That's how long. I got on the call. I said, hey, can I ask you a question? Who do you think I am? You think I started selling yesterday? <laughs> what do you think I do? You think, you think I'm just one of these guys you can get on a call and ask for a check and I'm going to wire it to you? Are you out of your mind? I said, I'm paying you zero. And if you ask for it, I will never call anybody for this again, period. You know what happens? We get, I said, I'm done. I don't have nothing else to say. I hang up. Respectfully, we hang up. Yeah. We're done. Tom is looking at me. Moral, <laughs> this is what Moral's reaction is because Moral at this point has been working with me for years. Yeah. Moral's like, this is another Tuesday with Pat. Okay, yeah. what's going on? So Moral just walks out. I got to go to my next meeting. Tom's like, <laughs> WTF just happened. What the f what was this all about? <laughs> then he calls Tom, the guy. They get on the phone together. The guy's like, Tom, what was that about? I mean, I thought this was going to be a civil conversation. You know what happens afterwards? That guy gets a call. Put your phone aside, guys. They keep, they keep picking up the sound with the phone. He, he, he gets a call from, from a guy saying, hey, we are looking for insurance companies to invest in, okay, and he says, is there any company you think we should invest in? He says, there's this one company that's ran by a guy that's very crazy, but I think you ought to consider it. Do you remember this? <laughs> yep. He tells him, that guy calls us, meets with Tom. 
That guy brings us $10 million. What? With De La Hoya, with Gabriel Brenner, and the guy that I had a four-minute call with. The software owner. The software owner ends up becoming one of the investors as well. Wow. Because he understands. By the way, you know what happened? We made him a ton of money with the investment and his software and his company. The company ended up exploding for them. But, but that's the part that sometimes you think a Dana just started being like this when he made money. But a guy like Dana, I promise you, Dana's been like this since he was 16 years old in the streets of Boston. Dana was like that, pushing his weight around, saying, I'm not going to stand up for this, when he lost a lot of things. And Dana having a position like this, I guarantee you, has cost him a couple relationships. I guarantee you. But that's exactly what built a $10 billion brand. You got to tip your... 100%, Pat. So, so, so going back to it... By the way, it, it ended up being a great relationship. We friendship got, till today. We got the software at a, at, at a massive discount, practically free. And we did make those phone calls. And we did help them. And so mm-hmm. everybody won at the end of the day. And it's kind of interesting, well, especially with the Dana thing. It's like we're, you're going to hit him up about the relationship or a post about Trump. He's obviously one of the biggest most visible supporters of Donald Trump. I mean, look at every UFC. He walks out with the freaking guy. It's kind of weird that somebody would ask, like, hey, take down a post about supporting him. It's like, don't you know who the hell Dana is? You knew who he was when he walked in the door and when he signed up for the deal. You know that he's 100%. Yeah, it's so, like, yeah. So to tell him, to tell him of all people to take it down, it's like that's... I will that's say that the, 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 the whole concept of... Telling somebody what they can and can't do or who you should or shouldn't vote for yeah. is antithetical to the United States. Yeah. Like, this is what yeah. we do. Now, you could, at the same time, you could say, I think you're an idiot for voting for that person. I can't believe you did that. You're Whatever, whatever yeah. it is, yeah. you could say whatever you want. But, Adam, but this, was mandate, happening. this was happening during COVID everywhere. Oh, I agree. This was happening during I agree. COVID everywhere. So, but let's go to the next story. Let's go to the It, it does come story. down to Trump, though. What do you mean? Meaning, like, nobody's saying, don't vote for Nikki Haley or no, else. I'm sorry. What are you talking yeah. about? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Theo Vaughn was for RFK. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not Trump. Theo no, Vaughn was RFK. Adam, oh, I think they, it's cancel culture, Adam. Yeah. The, well, everybody listen, was familiar given permission. With that. I'm saying Trump is the tip of the spear I, in I, this. I don't think that's not it, though, Adam. It's I, whoever I is anti-establishment. RFK is anti Trump is anti. Trust me, anybody that is on the right that's going to be anti-establishment or the left, which is RFK, Mm -hmm. even if it's a mansion, they're going to say take it down. Anything that's against whatever their protocols are is going to be taken down. This is why when we talk about The Rock yesterday, Rock is part of the establishment. I was just going to go to The Rock. That's the the point. He's not going to do anything to lose the sponsor because those guys fear losing sponsors. They don't have Dana's backbone uh, uh, to stand this up. Is you are right Rana on this. tried to do to Vivek. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.